Of the field. It's going to be a tough matchup, but we'll see how both trainers approach this game one. It will tell us a big story with how the rest of this set will play out and who will come out the winner in this round 14. Well, Zamazenta and Raging Bolt are going to be emerging from their Pokeballs to start us off trainers with Rapid Strike, Sal Urshifu, and Incineroar coming out from Victor on the other side. The immediate defense boost to Dauntless Shield coming out from Zamazenta's ability as the attack stats are dropped of Zamazenta as well. Yeah, you've got the fake out that is active on Victor's side of the field. You can choose to go for it into the Raging Bolt on Alessandro's side because it is a Salt Fest. You know you can guarantee that into that slot. Or you could choose to go for it into the Zamazen to prevent maybe an Iron Defense set getting set up because Alessandro's led pretty well here in a position where it's not threatened too hard. And you've got that Raging Bolt kind of covering the Urshifu here. It has to be very careful about a Thunderclap potentially coming out from that side of the field. And with the Water Terrestrialization as well, you don't have a defensive way to get around those electric type attacks from the Raging Bolt. So you've got to make a decision if you are Victor. Do you keep your Pokemon out on the field? Do you utilize that fake out and try and maybe get some good damage off with your Urshifu while faking out into the Raging Bolt? For now, it's going to be that terrestrialization trainers. Time to get shiny as this Zamazenta is going to be becoming a grass type, taking a little run in the park with its trainer holding its leash, letting out that victory cry, ready to deal massive damage in the face of responding terrestrialization over on Victor's side of the field. The Pokemon of choice will be the Incineroar, becoming even scarier than it was before, a ghost type, now immune to any fighting type moves that could be connecting down into that slot. Yeah, it's a really nice play here from Victor to make sure that those body presses aren't going to affect you coming out from the, the Zamazenta. As we just see a fake out and a U-turn into the Raging Ball, Urshifu wants to reposition. And a good choice after we do see the terrestrialization on that Zamazenta going for the Grass type. If you'd went for the Surging Strikes into that slot, then you would have been between a rock and a hard place. You would be doing very little damage, and it allows Alessandro to start setting up. Now you've got the option where Victor can adjust the board position. We see him hovering over the screen. And that's exactly what's coming in here, which may play a big role in being able to shut down this Amazenta depending on what Alessandro goes for. Well, the Protosynthesis is going to be activating the speed of this Screamtail as expected, so it can get off some really uh, powerful nuisance moves, shall we say. The Body Press, not going to do too much at all into that slot, but at least it's some damage, as opposed to if it had gone into the Incineroar, would have been nothing at all. Had it been the Heavy Slam, that would have been super effective, potentially achieve more. Yeah, and a nice play from Alessandro here, knowing that there might be the reposition of the Scream Tail coming onto the field. Not wanting to overcommit too early on to any of those setup options, just wanting to get raw damage onto the field. Not getting a big return there onto the Scream Tail, unfortunately, but in a position now where you can go for maybe an attack into it again. If you go decide to choose maybe one of the other options, like that Heavy Slam, it can do super effective damage into the Scream Tail. It leaves the Incineroar a bit kind of untouched though and if we see the protect like we are here it allows the incinero to kind of free up whatever victor wants to do so heavy slam would have been super effective into that slot but no damage taken by the scream tail on victor's side thunderbolt also connecting down into the scream tail not wanting to deal with those pesky moves that has access to one bit as knockoff will come out into the raging bolt softening it up a little bit removing the assault vest so the raging bolt is more vulnerable to special attacks coming out in the future as long as that scream tail's on the field it is threatening encore so alessandra has to think twice about going for something like a protect on the zamazenta yeah, and now you have the access to that Will-O-Wisp that Victor is hovering over or the parting shot. The, the Will-O-Wisp's nice into the Zamazenta for the reason that it would half the attack and reduce the damage of that heavy slam, making it life easier for the Screamtail. The Screamtail in a position as well with the Assault Vest gone now from that Raging Bolt. Potentially, a Dazzling Gleam could be an option to pick up the knockout there. Whether or not it will be enough to pick up the knockout is the question, though, and do you commit to that early on? We are seeing the Zamazenta leave the field. Zamazenta not liking what it's in the face of, running back to its kennel as Rillaboom emerges from the jungle in order to threaten these leaves onto the field. And indeed, priority grassy glide moves. Disable isn't going to be doing anything because it was targeted down into what was the Zamazenta. No move opted for yet in that slot on this turn. Thunderbolt, good for a little bit of chip into the screen tail, does not get the paralysis. Rillaboom is going to have to take this Will-O-Wisp, neutering its damage output for the remainder of the game. Yeah, and that's really not what Alessandro would like to see because the choice by 
land on that item. It's going to be rendered useless, essentially, with that burn to the Pokemon. And now it's not going to be as effective coming in. Otherwise, without the burn, it would really threaten a knockout onto that Screamtail with something like a Grass Glide. And then you remove one of those key components. It's a bit of a thorn in your side right at the moment. You've got to be careful, though, with this Raging Bolt because it is throwing out the Thunderbolts at the moment. You don't really want to take another one from this Raging Bolt. A combination up into the Screamtail could be enough to pick up the knockout. And also, this time, you've got that high horsepower and the Thunderbolt, which could go into the Incineroar um, and, and do some respectable damage. You could even opt to go for a Grass-type attack into that now it is a Ghost-type. Yeah, you absolutely could. It would be doing neutral damage at that point. Screamtail just wanted to scout out once more. You turn so that this Rillaboom can get out of there, bring something in from the back. Alessandro rebalancing the board state, getting these chess pieces all in a row, ready to strike when the iron is hot. Chi and Pao are going to be joining the field. The reveal of Alessandro's fourth Pokemon, dropping the defenses of everything around it. Chill certainly filling the atmosphere. Thunderbolt connecting into the Incineroar. Still no paralysis coming out from that move. As Raging Bolt is going to have those Thunderbolts it can dish out, hitting a little bit less electrifyingly. Yeah, a little less electrifying. That's a big part of this because I think keeping that Raging Bolt in check, even though it's close to getting knocked out, it's been left alone really on the field for Alessandro and he's able to utilize this damage output that it's got, doing some significant damage to the screen tail already and as you can see taking that Incineroar below half health so really taking away the utility for that Pokemon in future um, positions now Victor is going to bring in the Urshifu. The thing is, with the Chen Power on the field and next to this choice of Urshifu, you're in the position where you can Dazzling Gleam in this stage and potentially pick up a knockout on one of these two Pokemon. Which one do you value picking the knockout part on? Uh, you've got to watch out for that Thunderclap as well because that is still an option on the Raging Bolt and it would do some big damage to that Urshifu. So it's not as straightforward as it would seem. The Chen Power still got access to that Focus Sash. They're not in any danger if the double up isn't there and because of that threat, it is switching out. Yeah, Chi and Pao, incredibly frail indeed, an ice cannon, so to speak. Rillaboom rejoining the field now in order to take the attacks that might have been going into that slot. Thunderclap, super effective. Into Victor's Urshifu, bringing it down incredibly low as Dazzling Gleam will be super effective into the Raging Bolt without the Assault Vest now, and a critical hit on the Rillaboom to boot. Screamtail, of course, uh, not known for its offensive output, but with the lack of the Assault Vest doing much more than it would have done. U-turn whittling away down this Rillaboom. We've seen U-Turn come out a lot. You can see just how many dividends that can pay when you you keep reducing that health bar. You know, it all adds up. Yeah, now we are going to see the Trapagos finally hit the field. It's time for the Little Turtle to come out. It is going to Terra Shift and get that Terra Shell ability now. Before it is going to be able to do anything, though, it's got to consider what is out on the field. Thunderclap is a priority move that could come out. You've got the Grassy Glide. Even though that Rillaboom is burned, it's still under the grassy terrain. It can still do some decent damage there so still need to be careful because I think the the one thing that you want to do Trapagos is trying to reduce the amount of damage that you do take you got to remember that that Zamazenta is in the back and that Chen Pao as well with that sort of rune ability can be very dangerous yeah it absolutely can and uh, even though the Rillo Boom is burnt once you break that Terra Shell it's really primed to take even more damage from any other incoming attack that's potentially why Victor has the leftovers as the held item and with the grassy terrain on the field too will help it recover and get back up to full health. Zamazenta is going to rejoin the field because Dortmund's shield only activates on the very first turn it's in battle, so no immediate defense boost right now. Dazzling Gleam enough to pick up the knockout onto this Rillaboom finally, and now all eyes remain on this Terrapagos. Going for a signature move, the Terra Star Storm. These stars are plummeting into the Zamazenta, and it's taken really a decent amount of chunk of health from that. Yeah, and that's the problem I think that Alessandro has fallen a prey of here. We're going for that Terrestrialization early on now. It really puts you susceptible if the the Terrapagos goes for that Stellar Terrestrialization. The Terra Star Storm will be a double target attack. The Screamtail naturally going to be faster with that Protosynthesis boost than the Chen Power. You're going to be able to get Dazzling Gleam and then the Terra Star Storm off. And the power of that Terra Star Storm going to be increased because of the Terrestrialization on that Zamazenta. Looking like a very awkward position for Alessandro. Victor, a pilot in this match very, very well. Yeah, knowing the lines exactly as you said, Lee. Now, the Terrapagos still at full health. So the 
the Terra Shell remains to be broken. The Chim Pao over on the other side of the field doesn't have access to a fighting time move, which is quite common these days for Chim Pao that we have seen. So Terrapico's feeling that much safer still. Still taking super effective damage from Body Press, but again, you need to break the Terra Shell first. Scream Tail, really, really Victor prioritizing the Scream Tail's safety as well as the Terrapagos in this particular turn, because Scream Tail can pay such huge dividends later on in the match when Alessandro's options are whittled down even more. That was the heavy slam, would have been super effective into the Scream Tail and Throat Chop for a little bit of damage to break that Terra Shell into the Terrapagos. Yeah, really small play here from Alessandro, knowing that if you lock into the Body Press, is potentially that double protect that comes out from Medina, and then you'd be in the position where you could have that disabled the next turn, opting for the heavy slam to remove the kind of disruptive threat in that Scream Tail. Now the thing is, the Scream Tail can actually lock the Zamazenta into the heavy slam, making life a lot easier for the Trapagos. The Trapagos as well could just go for that Terrestrialization, go for the Terrestrosome, or take the time with that active Terra Shell to go for a Calm Mind, and that might be enough to make the end game a bit easier for Victor to lock up. Yes, yeah, setting up is so crucial in Regulation Set G. We've seen Terrapagos after Terrapagos go for it, Calyrex after Calyrex go for those nasty plots. But Incineroar is going to be joining the field. It's already terrestrialized into the Ghost type. So a much safer switch in than it might have been before. Intimidate, not going to be appreciated by either of these physical attackers. Disable coming out from the Scream Tail instead, so won't be able to opt for the Heavy Slam. Buying Victor a turn potentially, if that's what uh, Alessandro locked into. But no, it was the Body Press into the Ghost type Incineroar. So really safe coming out from Victor here. Throat Chop is going to make that Scream Tail scream a little bit less loudly. Yeah, great play here from Victor identifying that the body press would be probably the option from the Zamazenta into the Terrapagos, keeping it out of harm's way. A perfect switch in with the Incineroar had the immunity because of that ghost terrestrialization. And now the Heavy Slam is disabled, and now it is susceptible to an Encore, because if you get Encored after a disable, you are essentially shut out of the game. Zamazenta forced to almost go for a Protect this turn. Yeah, forced to go for a Protect, or you switch something in, but Victor has been piloting this so masterfully, playing around the threat that Alessandro can be dishing out. Now that's going to be Chi and Pao running back to his trainer as Rainy Bolt once more cranes its neck down over the battlefield, fake out. Connecting down into that Pokemon. Really good switch there by Alessandro, but here comes the Encore. So now this Amazenta is locked into a move that it cannot use. Yeah, it's going for the Body Press. Going to be doing minimal damage into that Scream Tail, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, not ideal because uh, we are going to see the Raging Bolt come back onto the field. It does have access to that Thunderclap. It can still pick up potentially a knockout onto the Incineroar. The Scream Tail going to be very close with that move, but you have to be susceptible to that Dazzling Gleam this next turn, which could be uh, another to take it down from the range that it's at. Zamazenta likely going to have to switch out to get rid of that disable, that encore, and it does leave the door open to the Chen Pao coming back onto the field. Not going to see any switches, though, as that Thunderclap does come out. Yeah, the resources and options are being whittled away for Alessandro here. The Dazzling Gleam enough to pick up the knockout onto the Raging Bolt. And of course, with this Amazenta locked into the Body Press, if a follow-up Will-O-Wisp connects, oh. a Screamtail still survives that Body Press to add insult to injury. Now with the Will-O-Wisp connecting, it's going to mean the Trapagos is even safer. Uh, in the face of the damage that could be coming out from that Zamazenta, which has been really, really reduced. Yeah, and the burn there really kind of helping out, just chip away at that Zamazenta now that the grassy terrain's not a thing helping the recovery at all. Chen Pao going to come back onto the field, and it does threaten the KO onto that Incineroar now because of the ghost typing, so you can remove that Pokemon if you'd like this turn. And it's likely that the, the Screamtail probably will go for a Protect here, maybe to scout out what that Chen Pao locks into, so you can potentially Encore or disable it the next turn. Uh, setting up the scene for maybe the Terrapagos coming back onto the field. But you've got to remember, Victor, even though those Pokemon are all pretty low health, except the Terrapagos, still got four against the two on Alessandro's side. Certainly does, and of course that Zamazenta is burned. So the restricted Pokemon really is locked down in this situation. A little bit of time now for Alessandro to think about how to readjust and approach game two. Now the game is certainly not over yet, but Victor has been doing a phenomenal job of trying to shut down Alessandro's side as Incineroar wants to run to the back, and Urshfu is going to surge out onto the field. Yeah, the Urshifu coming out into the field to protect from that screen tail as well, going to prevent any further damage this turn. We are going to see the body press again come out from that Zamazenta into that slot, just denied the knockout there for at least one more turn as the throw chop coming out. And enough, even though it's not very effective, picks up the knockout onto the Urshifu, but opens the door for the Incineroar to come back in with an active fake out to further support that screen tail. And indeed the Intimidate that's going to be reducing the damage output even further of Alessandro's cap. 
cat and dog story. And now it could be the Trapagos coming out once more, still on full health. Perhaps Victor deciding to step on the gas here instead of going for further damage reduction. Certainly Trapagos in a really solid position is not going to be able to go for the Terra Stella because that has been used on the Incineroar for that Terra Ghost. So Terra Star Storm only going to be a single target move for the remainder of the game. Yeah, and you can just see that last turn, the Zamazenta no longer disabled, still probably affected by that Encore. So there is a potential here of the Scream Tail going for the Disable, which will actually disable the move that it's locked into. And like I mentioned earlier, if that combination happens on the same move, then you are in a real bad position. That's why we are seeing the Protect from the Zamazenta. Very risky in front of a Scream Tail, unless you do knock it out as that Disable is launched into that slot. Screaming Tail can scream, Zamazenta can howl. Well, not this particular one, but playing the volume game at its own game as Ice Cold Crash is going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout onto that Scream Tail. Thankfully, it did indeed connect. It's two Pokemon apiece here, but having an Incineroar next to Terrapagos, that's a really fantastic position to be in. Chi and Pao brought down very low indeed. The Focus Ash broken, and Alessandro's health bars are slowly but surely disappearing from him. Yeah, and this has been so massively done yeah. by Victor. He is in the position now, getting the Incineroar back onto the field after the Protect with the Zamazenta. It can go for a double Protect. It's a 30% chance it will get it. Might have to go for it here, because if you don't, uh, you are just going to take the fake out. You're going to take a knockout. The, the Terrapagos probably likely going to go for the Terrestrialization here. Terra Star Storm pick up the double knockout, potentially into both the Chen Pao and that Zemazen to this next turn. Yeah, potentially. It seems it's only a matter of time, no matter what option Victor locks into here. But as you said, Lee, an absolute masterclass in how to play Terrapagos as a restricted Pokemon into an, a restricted that can threaten oh, it so much. Zemazen does get the double protect, however. So a little bit of a window, perhaps, opening for Alessandro here. Fake Out isn't going to be doing anything into that protected puppy. And now all eyes coming down onto the Chien Pao. Ice Cool Crash is oh. going to be going oh. into the Terra Shell. It's not a dodge. That is certainly what we could have been deluded into thinking. Not very effective into the Trapagos there. Takes it very well indeed. Terra Star Storm coming down into Zamazenta as well. So well targeted by, uh, well, well protected by Alessandro here as the Leftovers is going to slowly recover the Trapagos, hopefully back up to its Terra Shell full health. Yeah, now with that Terra Shell broken, it is going to be susceptible to taking a a body press from that Zamazenta, making life a little bit tricky for this Terrapagos. Is it going to be able to take the combination of attacks from the Chen Pao and the Zamazenta now? That double protect was so pivotal in that last turn. Uh, you know, if you are Alessandro, you've just got to go for your outs, and that's exactly what's happened here, pushing Victor's back right against the wall here. See how it plays out. Body press coming out. Oh, Ooh, not doing that much. Is it enough, though? Oh, it's still big damage, but Throat Chopper actually goes into the Incineral there, so that is going down. Now, of course, Zamazenta being burned it's not threatening as much damage as it would have done into the Trapagos, but you've got Chien Pao reducing the defenses of everything around it on the field. Terra Star Storm into the Zamazenta here. Of course, a neutral hit now. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout. It's now Turtle versus Snow Leopard in this chilly, watery, climactic end to game one. Yeah, this is coming right down to the wire here. You've got the Chen Pao on one side of the field. It's Focus Sash is broken. Ooh. You've got the Terrapagos on about 50% health. It has got the leftovers. You could, if you're Victor, just go for the Protect. Yeah. You Utilize that leftovers, get a little bit more health back. It might be enough, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Yeah, three minutes until the battle ends as well, trainers. These trainers are really playing slow and steady. A tale of the tortoise and the hare, but in this case, the hare is that cat in the Chien Pao. Leftovers going to be recovering a little bit more health for Terrapagos here. Could make all the difference as to whether it's going to be able to survive another turn. Here we go. Terra Star Storm seems to be what Victor's hovering over. Got to go for that damage. There's not the opportunity to go for a Carmine here. You don't have that luxury. Here comes the high school crash coming down into Terrapagos. Not enough for the knockout. Oh, but Terrapagos flinches. does flinch. Huge flinch. Massive flinch there because now if this Terrapagos is able to, uh, you know, it can go for a protect here, recover a little bit more with the leftovers, would have to depend on an high school crash. Miss perhaps coming out, but then perhaps the Chien Pao could go for a throat chop instead of 100% accurate move. But the flinch meaning that it wasn't able to secure the knockout onto the Chien Pao when it had the opportunity to wrap up the match right now for Victor. Yeah, I mean, I think if you are Alessandro, here, you get the flinch, it really swings you back into this match, but you're going to need one more before you're able to secure this. So, yeah. looking for the flinch, playing to your out. Alessandro doing exactly oh, what he needs to. Go. The icicle crash, will it get another one? Because he needs it. HP. Is it going to flinch? No, no! It's not. Victor is going to be coming out on top when the odds were against him just in the very final moments of that game. Absolutely thrilling game one here.
here, trainers, and we still... Him and it could go either way. Well, let's get into it and see which way it does go as Rillaboom and Raging Bolt joining the field for Alessandro. Going to be Trapagos hitting the field immediately this time for Victor. Slow and steady wins the race no more as it comes out on the very first turn with Incineroar alongside. The other thing as well that to mention as well, that Victor went and, and kind of committed to that thrustalization on the Incineroar very early yeah. on in that game, and it, uh, you don't feel like you need to do that with the Zamazenta not facing you down uh, as the leads for Alessandro are here. So it might open the door for Victor to take advantage of that Terrapagos, the stellar terrestrialization in this match, which yeah. he wasn't able to do in that game one. Absolutely. The stellar terrestrialization on Terrapagos will be making Terra Star Storm a spread type move as well as boosting the power of that. But of course, you do have the Calm Mind up the sleeve of the Terrapagos for Victor as well, in order to boost up not only its offense, but its defense. Uh, not that the special attack can be coming out from the Raging Bolt uh, in order to capitalize off the reduced damage that could be coming into the Terrapagos as a result, as Fake Out is going to buy Terrapagos a turn to do that. Yeah, a really nice play here from Victor. We do see the U-turn just opted for from the Rillaboom, not wanting to commit to one of those choice band boosted uh, wood hammers or high horsepowers in this situation. Just wants to help uh, Alessandro just reposition what he's got on the field and doing that, keeping that Rillaboom for later. It's going to be a pivotal Pokemon for him to play around with. Allows the Zamazenta to come in, activate that Dauntless Shield, which is a one-time only per match uh, boost to the defense stat. Going to mean that those body presses are hitting a lot harder. The Calm Mind there, really nice play from Terrapagos. It's still has its Terra Shell intact, so it is going to be able to utilize that. But if the Zamazenta doesn't go for its Trastalization here, then it's not going to be taking as much damage from the Terra Star Storm unless we see the Stellas, uh, the Terrastalization. Yeah, exactly. Yes, this Zamazenta coming in saying, please don't burn me to the Incineroar on the other side of the field. Sometimes just knowing that that is an option can dictate the way the battle swings. Perhaps a little Protect being threatened onto the Zamazenta here, or indeed a Terrastalization. And it is in Indeed time for the Terra to come out. And the Crystals are going to be sprouting up around once more onto the Incineroar. So again, Victor not going to have that Terra Stellar option for the Terrapagos later on in the game. No, choosing and maybe rightly so going for it for that okay. uh, uh, Incineroar. We are going to see the Iron Defense launched out, putting the Zamazenta to plus three on its defense stat. As another Coal Mine comes out from the Terrapagos here, it's going to boost its special attack and special defense to plus two now. The Raging Ball left un unaffected now coming out with the electric web a huge turn because the double target attack the most important thing here is it breaks that terra shell ability like we've already seen opting to go for the trastalization on the incineroar you can no longer go for it onto the trapagos yeah exactly this i love seeing this alternate game plan for these trainers the setup mode that we did not see in game one parting shot going to be mitigating the damage output from that raging bolt even further perhaps not targeting into the zamazenta expecting a protect but certainly the the Zamazenta right now is much more of a threat than it was in that game one. So it's no surprise seeing Victor hover over the Disruptor in the back, the Screamtail. Yeah, it can come in now. It can go for the Disable. It can go for the Encore, which is probably the more preferable thing because then you can lock that Zamazenta into those Iron Defenses, render it almost useless against the Terrapagos. Perfect protection in this situation. You've got two Calm Minds up and you can start firing off those Terra Star Storms as well. Mm. You see the Grassy Train Recovery there. It's got its Terra Shell back, so it's yeah. going to be in a good position to start whittling away maybe the options next to the Zamazenta if it stays on the field and gets locked into that iron defense. Yeah, seems like Terra Star Storm might be coming out into this Raging Bolt here, which is really nice because it covers for a switch that Alessandro might have up his sleeve. Of course, a ground type move like the Earth Power would not be super effective into something like the Rillaboom that's lurking in the back. Zamazenta going to be the guard dog right now, going for the protect. Encore attempting to come out into that slot. You can protect now, but then the following turn, you're threatening that Uncle once again, perhaps sourcing out a switch in that slot later on. Another Electro Rev coming out. The Terra Shell once again is going to be distorting the tight matchups and once again is going to be broken here. So a little bit of chip damage, but reducing the speed of that Scream Tail is crucial so that the Zamazenta can act, perhaps hit it with a heavy slam before it can be encored into a protect. Terra Star Storm boosted by those two car mines into the Raging Bolt with the Assault Vest, able to take that with a quarter of his health remaining. That's a really critical turn here from Alessandro. You know, going for the protect seems risky with the Zamazenta. Center, but essentially getting that electro web off onto the screen tail renders the speed boost that it got through its uh, booster energy kind of useless now and that Chen Pao comes back onto the field it's actually going to be faster than that screen tail so really pivotal play here we do see a thunderclap come out and it Ooh. is going to be into that Terrapagos breaking once again that terror shell yeah and softening it up potentially for the Zamazenta if it's going oh. into that zone it is the body press into the oh. 
That's going to be enough to secure the knockout here. Alessandro in a much better position than he was in that game one. Onkor is going to come out into the Zamazenta, Center, but if you're Alessandro, you're thinking, well, great, I just threatened so much more damage onto so many Pokemon on your side of the field. That Incineroar is the Terra Ghost. I have to be careful about that. We don't have the reveal of the fourth Pokemon for Alessandro, but if it is the Chien Pao, we'll be threatening super effective damage into that Terra Ghost Incineroar. And I talked about the Chien Pao coming onto the field and outspeeding it, but it actually played a huge role in the Zamazenta being able to outspeed the Scream Tail, avoiding that Encore and then catching Victor totally off guard, getting that body press. It's plus three onto the Trapagos more than enough after the Terra Shell was broken to pick up a knockout. Big, big play from Alessandro, taking a, a big lead in this match and making things very difficult for Victor going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And you've still got the terrestrialization option available if you're Alessandro as well. Terrestrializing into the grass typing, of course, that's going to change up the matchup entirely. There is no fire offensive move coming that can come out from the Incineroar there. The body press being able to be taken really quite well by that Screamtail, a very, very bulky Pokemon indeed. The follow-up Thunderbolt, Alessandro is wanting to remove from the field, does not get the paralysis. The knockoff does at least remove the Raging Bolt. It has been felled. Yeah, the Raging Bolt going down, but I don't think if you're Alessandro, you kind of mind about this because it allows you to bring in something like the Rillaboom, maybe that last Pokemon that we haven't had revealed yet, and start doing some big damage, especially if the Rillaboom comes onto the field now. It's great timing with the Grassy Terrain yeah. just dispersing. You're going to be able to set it up once again and utilize some big attacks but opting for the Chen Pao another good option to bring in because like we've already mentioned with that Electro Web onto the screen tail the Chen Pao going to be faster than it. you do have to worry about that Incineroar has got access to fake out going into this turn so we'll be able to break potentially the sash on the Chen Pao which you kind of want to try and avoid if possible yeah, and the Chien Pao does have the Terra Ghost type. That means it would be taking zero damage from the Fake Out, keeping that Focus Ash intact. But it's all about how Alessandro is playing the long game, of course. Not terroring this turn. Body Press coming out into the Scream Tower. Really respectable damage. Throat Chop going to be enough, of course, to pick up the knockout onto that Incineroar. Now it is super effective. Going to have the reveal of Victor's fourth and final Pokemon from the back here. Alongside the screen tail. you can see how this damage really chips away at a Pokemon. And even though it might not seem much on turn one, by turn two it's starting to get worrying. As Body Press isn't going to be an option for this Samazenta, so potentially an opening here, because of course the Iron Defenses are only boosting up that move, not the Heavy Slam. Yeah, that's the thing. And the Urshifu coming onto the field now, you think it's in a great position, especially with those Choice Golf Surging Strikes, it could go into the Chen Pound, potentially pick up a knockout there. There's Amazentas. Not really going to be able to offer too much offensive for the next few turns. Um, and the Scream Tail in a position where it can fire off those dazzling gleams. Has to be careful about an Icicle Crash coming out if the knockouts miss from the Urshifu, of course. But you've really got to worry about that Rillaboom in the back for Alessandro, which you feel like when the opportunity is right, it will be able to just come in and kind of be the cleanup squad and take down, uh, tying up this match for Alessandro. Yeah, you can't protect with the Urshifu because carrying the Choice Scarf is not a move that Urshifu has the option of choosing. Here comes Rillaboom in order to provide that meadow on the field once more and threaten this Urshifu no end. The way Alessandro has adapted here has been masterful. Close combat is going to be enough to take this Chien Pao down to his Focus Sash quite easily. Threatened by the bear on the other side of the field, but this cat is still looking menacing, chilling everything in its surroundings, softening up this Urshifu even more for an incoming Grassy Glide, potentially. Throat Chop going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto that screen tail. Of course, the Sword of Ruin, reducing the defense of everything around it. Yeah, and a really well-played game from Alessandro, taking the moments and executing a plan perfectly here. That Electro Web so pivotal in the Game 2 game plan. Uh, the Rillaboom now on the field, going to be able to just lock in to one of those grass type attacks, be enough to take. But it doesn't change its defenses, and that is a drawback of mm -hmm. the Terra Stella, and something that Victor's going to have to carefully consider, because that body press is still threatening so much. This is a lead that says, no thank you, Zamazenta. In Incineroar and the Urshfu, in the face of Zamazenta and the Rage Bolt on Alessandro's side of the field. Yeah, and I think it comes down to the terrestrialization on the, the Terrapagos only if the Zamazenta terrestrializes early on in this game because it makes it easier to make that decision. I like this lead from Victor though, again, putting a bit of pressure on that Zamazenta with, you know, the, the surging strikes, the fake out into that slot if we don't see, uh, even if we see a protect, the surging strikes will be hitting in and doing decent damage into that slot as well. The Raging Bolt, a bit of a sitting target as well with that Assault Vest can't protect this turn. So where the fake out comes, we'll have to see, but Alessandro has to adjust here because of that fake out, because of the big threat on the Urshifu and we do 
do see that terrestrialization, Charlie. Immediate terrestrialization for this puppy into that Terra Grass. This is something that didn't work out so well for Alessandra in game one, clearly has a different game plan right now. Matching terrestrialization in turn one of this fascinating three game set between Vector Medina and Alessandro Fantanato. That's going to be Incineroar going for the Terra Ghost. It's not going to be taking any damage from body presses that could be coming out into that slot for the remainder of the game. Fake out, shutting down the Raging Bolt for this particular turn. U turn, coming out into the Raging Bolt. Urshfu running to the back in favor of a Pokemon that's in the back for Victor. Yeah, and it looks like it's a nice play here from Alessandro because taking an opportunity where you think there's so much pressure with the fake out, I am going to terrestrialize just to get alleviation from those big threats. You know that you're probably going to be repositioning that Scream Tail coming onto the field from Victor. It'll be interesting to see what the Zamazenta locks into here. We know the Raging Bolt not going to be able to get a turn off. And we do see that Iron Defense boosting the Zamazenta's defense up to plus three. Once again, just like in that game two. Now, this is really nice because even if the Zamazenta is burned here, at least it's still threatening really big damage. And of course, you can go for another Iron Defense if you're given the opportunity by your opponent in order to mitigate the damage of that burn even further. So interesting turning of tables here for Alessandro, turning of the game plan from game one, certainly. And this Raging Bolt still on the field with Screamtail alongside the Incineroar in order to threaten those nuisance moves. Yeah, I think the one thing you have to identify here is that the protects are quite key here, especially from that Scream Tail. You don't want to fall into the same thing that you did in that game two with the Electro Web. The Scream Tech very, uh, is protecting very smart from uh, Victor because you are going to avoid that potential Electro Web that was so detrimental to you in game two. So now you're in a position where you are going to be able to lock in that Zamazenta, almost try and force it off the field with an Encore into the Protect yeah. this next turn. And that's the key. Even if you take an Electro Web here, it's not the end of the world because you kind of it's worth it to neutralize that big threat in Zamazenta. We saw how uh, important it was in game two for Victor, uh, for Alessandro, sorry, and so detrimental to Victor. This could be the crucial turn of the game trainers. This Zamazenta has got plus three, but as soon as it's withdrawn by Alessandro, as we're seeing, it's going to lose all those boosts. It's not going to get another Dauntless Shield boost when it rejoins the field. Has to go for another Iron Defense to get to the offensive position that it once was, but the threat of the screen tail just proves too much, as Real Boom is going to provide the percussion for Scream Tail's vocals. Disable connected down into the Raging Bolt, oh. predicting that switch. Really nice call there by Victor. Electroweb disabled. So the speeds are going to be remaining the same as long as that is the case. Thunderbolt coming down into Scream Tail. Doesn't get the paralysis once more as will o -Wish connects down into the Rillaboom. Now that's still really nice in order to neutralize the damage output coming out from that physical attacking Rillaboom. Yeah, like flicking a page is in a book. Red so perfectly there from Victor onto Alessandro's side of the field. Knowing that the Zamazenta was so precious it had to switch out going for that will-o-wisp but was no risk in going for that because if the rillaboom comes in like it did you've neutered that choice band it makes it a lot easier to deal with going forward and the nice thing is as well that you have disabled that electro web it's not going to be a problem from that raging bolt anymore because uh, you, it's disabled it's yeah. not even in contention so the scream still in a great position it is going to be threatened by the rillaboom you still have to be careful about those grassy terrain boosted wood hammers that could come out even burn it's still going to do a lot of damage but you're in a good position now with the Incineroar to potentially pivot out with that parting shot onto either the Rillaboom or that Raging Ball and get something like the Terrapagos in. Not seeing the pivot out, we're just going to see a straight swap from the Incineroar and the Terrapagos join the fray. Hard switch as Terrapagos emerges from its shell. It's got that Terra Shell ability activated now. That's going to be protecting it from any moves at all, rendering them not very effective. Screamtail still sitting around on the field going for that Protect. U-turn targeted down into the Terrapagos. Going to be breaking the Terra Shell, but with the leftovers and the grassy terrain, if that Raging Belt doesn't target down into that slot this turn, it's going to be bringing that Terra Shell back up into activation. Alessandro deciding which Pokemon to bring in from the back here. Time for Zamazenta to rejoin the field. You can see how carefully you've got to pivot around in this particular matchup. And so many in Rage G. Thunderbolt actually coming down into Terrapagos, oh. really meaning that the Terrapagos is going to be taking so much more damage from any further moves coming out. Yes, you can protect, but it's going to be a long old way to get that Terrapagos back up to full HP in the Terra Shell. Yeah, really nice play here from Alessandro to take advantage of the fact that you know probably it's likely the Incineroar are going to leave the field and something else going to join if it is that Terrapagos. Targeting down with that Thunderbolt, getting some big damage, especially after the Terra Shell had been broke. Really, really good 
good bit of play there. It allows now the Trapagos to be threatened heavily from a body press from the Samazenta. It doesn't have the Dauntless Shield, so it doesn't have that defensive boost to its stats. So it's not going to be doing as much damage. It's going to be very close whether or not if the Trapagos doesn't protect if the Body Slam will pick up the knockout or not. It's not going to be susceptible to those encores or those disables from the Scream Tail just yet. But you have to wait. If you lock into something, you've got to be careful what you go for. Do you lock into the Heavy Slam, though, if you are the Samazenta, knowing that the Trapagos could switch out? Heavy Slam would be super effective onto the screen tail and Sinner are going to rejoin the fray in that turret goes typing so uh, intimidate being dropped down onto the Zamazenta reducing the damage further of a heavy slam that could be coming out protect double protect failed by that screen tail here leaving it really vulnerable to this heavy slam much less so thanks to intimidate but that is a huge chunk of health on such both Pokemon Thunderbolt oh. is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout yes it is by Alessandro Alessandro really turning the tables here yeah that is a huge play from Alessandro picking the moment perfectly there and getting a huge knockout onto that scream tail, identifying that a really awkward situation had occurred there with the Zamazenta coming in, kind of free to choose whatever attack it wanted. You don't have the ability to disrupt with the Encore, the Disable, and now absolutely capitalizing in this position, making things extremely difficult for Victor. The Zamazenta free to go for those Iron Defenses if it wishes. It's got the Trastalization, and it can start setting up and disrupting this match. Yeah, this is, the scream tail is the key disruptor, but it's down and out right now. Incineroar still threatening threatening the Will-O-Wisp onto the field, but a huge knockout for Alessandro here with all four Pokemon remaining. The Urshfu isn't really threatening too much damage at all into the Zamazenta. Fake out connecting down into the Raging Bolt. So is the close combat. Not enough to pick up the knockout here, but the Raging Bolt incredibly low. But the Urshfu really being softened up now by the defense drops. Thanks to the close combat, Body Press coming down into that slot as well. It's not going to be able to take another one of those. No, it is not. And the minus one defense drops that you've taken from that close combat really coming into play there onto that Urshifu in a position now where another Body Press will be able to pick up the knockout. Another close combat, of course, will do a good, a considerable chunk of damage into the Zamazenta. It hasn't set up any of those Iron Defenses yet. And also the Raging Bolt in a position where it could go down this next turn. But you've got the Thunderclap there. Thunderclap, probably a range move where it can pick up the Urshifu. Uh, but it leaves you a little bit susceptible against the Incineroar, which you can't really touch with anything other than the Heavy Slam from the Zamazenta. Thunderclap really safe here into the Urshifu. Could have been a Trapagos switching in, but then you can lock that slot down with a very threatening, super effective body press. That's not going to be doing anything here because it's redirected into the Incineroar in that Terragos. And the will o -Wisp is going to be dodged by that Zamazenta there. So Alessandro has a massive opening now. Yeah, big opening because the Heavy Slam is what you're going to be relying on to deal damage to that Incineroar. You've got got to bear in mind that Alessandro does have all four Pokemon still and a lot of options in the back to help deal with that Incineroar when the time comes. Terrapagos joining the fray now. Last two Pokemon for Victor. Things not looking that great for him at this situation. You've still got the priority with the Raging Bolt. Going to opt to switch it out though for something else to come in its place. Going to be Chim Power once more rejoining the field here. Trainers, here comes that chilly Snow Leopard reducing the defenses of everything around it thanks to his Sword of Ruin ability. Terrapagos is going to be able to recover a little bit of health thanks Thanks to his leftovers item at the end of this turn. Body press wall targeting down into it, opening the way for Victor to go for another Will O Wisp onto this Amazenta if it connects. But this time, going to be a knockoff into the Chi and Pal, breaking the focus, Sash. Yeah, a really great player here from Alessandro. Again, just piling on the pressure, continually doing that now. The Trapagos has protected, but a double up from that Chen Pao and the Amazenta. We know they're going to outspeed the Trapagos. It's in an awkward, really bad position where it will go down if both moves connect. Of course, then all you need to do is deal with the Incineroar, which is as long as that Chen Pao sticks around on the field, they'll be easily able to dispose of because of that Ghost oh, Terra typing. Gets another Protect, though, does that Terrapagos here, so it's keeping itself a little bit safer right now. Body Press going down into that slot once more, once more, enabling this Incineroar to go for a Will-O-Wisp and render that Zamazenta much less effective now. Now the Throat Chop, not enough for the one-hit knockout here, bringing it down to about a third of its health. The Will-O-Wisp does connect this time. The Terrapagos still really vulnerable here, especially with the Sword of Ruin on the field. Do have a burned Rillaboom in the back for Alessandro, but it is carrying the choice ban, so a really offensive one. Victor doing everything they can right now in order to claw this back. Yeah, the double protect there. I don't think you're going to get a third, so maybe opting for an Icicle Crash and a body press into that Terrapagos would be enough. Maybe just the choice, uh, the throw chop into that slot. The Terra Shell's gone. We do see the body press. It is Ooh, doing a good yeah. amount of damage. Is it enough to get in 
range of the throw job. And it is, yes. it is. So it's just Victor's incineral left on the field. Alessandro Fantinato here at the Bologna special event on home turf, having a phenomenal showing as the knockoff just chipping away at the Zamazenta here. It's four versus one. And Alessandro has turned the tables so masterfully that Victor is going to be throwing in the towel here. It was a nail biting set. It was tense. We were on the edge of our seats, trainers, but it will be Alessandro Fantinato taking the set. Incredible game from Alessandro. Absolutely so wonderfully played every step of that game.